Since Modern Warfare 2's reveal, I've wanted to provide the most information possible for those interested. Touch on just about everything you could have a question on or interest in, and hopefully we've done a decent enough job so far covering that. Today, while gearing up for the Season 4 of Warzone release next week, I wanted to round into the weekend with a discussion about an upcoming system of play that genuinely will be game-changing if implemented as such. Today, we're breaking down what that system looks to be based upon industry inside reports and what it means for the upcoming year, maybe even two for Modern Warfare 2 if we get that two-year support cycle. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Are you hoping to see the system implemented as such? Are you hoping to see some changes? What are the case? Drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 2. I'm looking forward to sharing more. So if you're interested in staying up to date with everything and joining us on that road to half a million subscribers, I'd love to have you. And finally, if you're interested in protecting your vision, the best option on the market is Gamer Advantage glasses, but more on them in just a bit. That said, let's jump into the discussion at hand. Today, we're talking about matchmaking, a system that largely with Modern Warfare 2019 changed everyone's perception and was brought to the forefront of the discussion every year since. For the last two to three years here from where we are and when it was introduced, it's been a hot topic of discussion for all players involved. What was largely called skill-based matchmaking was felt heavily in Modern Warfare 2018's beta for sure, I can't recall off the top of my head if it was apparent in the alpha, given that it was just round-based 2v2 gunplay, but I still remember my beta experience perfectly. The first five games on, I absolutely dominated. I think my first game that I played was a Grazna Raid Domination, like 10v10 or something like that if that was in the beta. Double or triple chopper gunner gameplay, absolutely bodying players. Fast forward a few games though, and well, that's when the matchmaking hit and it became something like a competitive GB match. The switch was absolutely flipped. I can recall another period when that happened as well, pre-launch of Black Ops Cold War. Matchmaking wasn't quite turned on, if you want to call it that, until the global launch of the game at 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern of launch night. If you had the game earlier than that, you somehow got into the servers. Matchmaking was solely based on ping, and you could absolutely find some absurd lobbies by comparison to just a few hours later. The system has become integral to matchmaking in Call of Duty across traditional MP as well as Warzone, and it's something that's turned off players for a multitude of different reasons. Many want a pub stomp. They just want to do as best as they can all of the time, and there's nothing wrong with that. I know that's absolutely the most common argument that I hear against people wanting loosened skill-based matchmaking. Me, personally, what I really notice is that statistically being in the top 1% of players globally, ping discrepancies, hitching in gameplay would be something that I would notice and I'm sure a lot of others notice because to create that sort of relatively even level gameplay finding those other higher tiered players may not be in the same relative area as you so from an interest of just easier competition to the other end of the spectrum of genuinely having games be affected in connection I'm sure there's a number of different reasons you could come up with that you don't want the matchmaking system we've seen in Modern Warfare 2. That system like all things introduced with Modern Warfare 2019 the seasonal ranking system the revised battle pass it was all in the name of elongating player retention, so the more accurate representation of the last few years matchmaking would be retention-based matchmaking, not necessarily skill-based. This system would learn your play habits and, for lack of a better descriptor, game your emotions. That matchmaking algorithm knew when you were about to get off, what habits and performance usually preceded a shutoff for that play session, and what kept you on. So the algorithm would feed you good lobbies for a bit if you were about ready to get off, and once you had those good lobbies, it would gradually throw you back into that pool of, maybe say, tougher ones, and repeat that vicious cycle, the ultimate goal of which to keep the player on as long as possible. Now, where does the potential change come into play, if there is one? Well, that started actually all the way back in February and is compounded with recent information that we learned about the gameplay systems that, with full transparency, is not confirmed. It does look to be something that makes this claim even more valid. Back in February, industry insider Ralph's Valve had mentioned, despite plans for revising Modern Warfare 2's skill-based matchmaking system, disbanding lobbies are supposedly here to stay for all future premium Call of Duty titles. That last bit in and of itself is a whole discussion, but not what I want to really get into with this video just yet. The key part being that there was apparently revisions being made to the matchmaking system as we've previously detailed. That retention-based matchmaking system finally seeing some changes whereas it hadn't the last three years. That initial report was then followed up to questions asking about it in relation to what does the revision mean, making it more or less restrictive, with Ralph replying, less debilitating. Demonware has had this particular system in R&D for a few years now. They're certainly against the idea of disciplining the better 
margin players. Also stating that there's a fine line with matchmaking where do they draw the line in the players that are losing the matches to the point in the algorithm where they either back out of the game and requeue or close the game entirely. So from the get go, we've heard that skill based matchmaking will be revised and in a way it seems toned down, which for all sweats, that's absolute music to our ears, perhaps. Now, will this be the old glory days of pub stomping every lobby like we did in Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 2? Probably not, but you may not be feeling like you're sweating 24-7 in a standard TDM or domination match. But recent reports further that information, and perhaps even compounds with information that we learned officially speaking for improvements to the AI systems that we'll see in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. Recently, Ralph stated from a source that the new system would accommodate the brackets for all players, higher and lower skill in a less debilitating manner, allowing for the lower brackets to coexist, following up with a report on how bots could be working to fill out those matches for a genuinely required protected bracket. That bracket including, as exampled, handicapped players, and that bracket having tool sets to combat those that would try and smurf their way in or reverse boost their way in to that lower protected bracket. Now, this report came a few weeks before the official reveal of Modern Warfare 2, and when the plausibility of seeing bots in the game seemed kind of odd, but to me, this now checks out given what we know and given what we saw with the discussion in sort of an ambiguous way about how Infinity Ward talked about their overhaul to the bot system and the AI coming in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, but didn't quite give any definitive answer on if they were coming to multiplayer or if they weren't, and when pressed further, said that they were still figuring out the systems in place. To me, this checks out that with such knowledge of that overhauled system ahead, and given that this report was made weeks before the reveal of the game, I'm inclined to at least consider that maybe there is that protected bracket with genuine bot players, but then the coexisting of other higher skilled brackets or just average player brackets are there as well. But where does that leave us. Will we now be seeing every YouTuber post gameplays of literal bot gameplay? I mean, I'm sure that there's always going to be those people that will exploit their ways into the systems, but for the vast majority of content, for the vast majority of player experiences, you or I, I'd wager that it affects next to nothing in that regard. The way the report sounds, if the fail safes are as good as anticipated the way that I see it, is almost like an expanded boot camp playlist from back in the day. For those that weren't around back for the original Call of Duty games, the older ones, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was only available in World at War and Black Ops 2. But anyways, Boot Camp was a TDM playlist that was built out for the new players to multiplayer in mind, getting them acquainted with the weaponry, some of the maps, and all of the play experiences, but was only accessible to those that were level 8 and lower. After you hit level 9, you could no longer enter this, so it would sort of protect that bracket of new players to the game in a sense, but once you ended up going back there, you couldn't go and pub stomp on any newbies. You ended up just having to play the regular game like everybody else. I kind of envision the system like that, where a certain criteria that's met for genuinely needed protected brackets to enter into on the back end would get those sort of lobbies with bots, but then... Hopefully, if all things work ideally, those existing brackets above that wouldn't be so tightly knit, where the remaining 70 to 80 to 90% of players that would not need to be in that protected bracket would then have a less restrictive gameplay experience, where perhaps ping truly is king and the only thing that affects your matchmaking and lobbies to follow, balancing out the team with a sort of skill-based matchmaking system only once those lobbies were formed, similar to how we've seen in every single Call of Duty before Modern Warfare 2019. Games like Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3 did have skill-based matchmaking systems in place, but they were more so a team balancing effort once a match and lobby was chosen. That's why you could end up being a one-man squad where your five other teammates in domination were absolutely useless. You may have just been that very high-skilled player of those 12 chosen and had to have your experience balanced out by not-so-helpful teammates, to put it lightly. But that's kind of how I envision it. Perhaps that's too idealistic, a dream that maybe I'll just disappoint myself with if I stick to that belief and hope, but we'll have to wait and see. With the possible inclusion of bots actually in the game, allowing for those protected players to play with some players, but also have bots round out that experience, maybe that does allow for a loosened matchmaking system in regards to those players that don't need protected. Time will tell, but it's absolutely an interesting thought to consider, and a report that I don't know that I've seen too much discussion on just yet, at least in the capacity that I think that it should be getting. So, that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your 
your thoughts and feedback down below. Would you guys like to see that where matchmaking sort of goes back to the systems we knew of before Modern Warfare 2019, but for those that genuinely need that protection, they have it filled out with bots. Is that something you think would be plausible? Is it something you'd be cool with? Whatever the case, feel free to let me know your thoughts below. But before we go, in light of recent events, I want to take some of the previously scheduled sponsored time to talk about another partner of mine, one who treats their employees properly, Gamer Advantage, who recently released their new sustainability collection, which is something I absolutely love. And I've said it before, I don't want to sound like a hippie, but I mean, we've only got one Earth and every step to help keep it alive is a good gesture in my books. The new sustainability line is the best of it all. The comfort, durability, and clinically proven effectiveness of Gamer Advantage frames and lenses, as well as 100% recycled components to them. So when you're all done with it, the box, the case, the pouch, and hopefully not for a long time, even the frames themselves are entirely biodegradable. They've launched three colors and three different frame sets, the Terra, Arbor, and Waldens. Myself, I think that I'm going to get the Terras. Got to try those out a little bit myself and loved them. But if you're interested in investing in your vision health, combating the blue light that comes along with the daily grind of working on a PC, working on a ton of content, or just being on your phone constantly like myself, I'd highly suggest trying these frames out. I'll always be transparent on it. Yes, these glasses are a little bit pricier than the $15 pair you'll find on Amazon, but I swear to you, I've used those pair on Amazon and Gamer Advantage blows them out of the water. Plus, clinically proven, unlike a lot of those basic pairs on Amazon. If you'd like to check them out and save, use code ESPRESSO to get yourself a 10% off discount, but absolutely no pressure to do so. Check them out if you're at all interested. That said, thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 2. We still have a little bit of Modern Warfare 2 coverage before Warzone and Season 4 kicks off next week. So if you guys want to stay to do with all of that, plus also the new content coming, I'd love to have you in the community. That said, thanks so much for watching. Modern Warfare 2. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.